Have you ever felt like you can't really visualize what an actuary does, even though you know you want to be one? Well, in this video, I'm going to give you a glimpse into an actuarial reserve calculator so that you can get a bit of an understanding of what some actuaries do every single day. Now, a typical actuarial modeling software license costs thousands of dollars, so for this example, I've just set it up into a simple Excel workbook, and that way you can learn a bit of Excel along the way too. Okay, so in this example, we're going to be calculating the reserve. And basically, a reserve is the amount of money that an insurance company needs in order to cover all its future claims that it expects, all its future costs, and to uh, release profit. So basically, I'm going to be walking you through a fairly simple example of that in this. So first, we're going to calculate expected claims. So I'm going to go to this tab right here. Now, we're calculating the reserve for 10-year policies, life insurance policies. So basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate the expected claims for three different policyholders and then also other as a whole group because in theory there would be probably hundreds maybe thousands of policyholders that have this particular policy um, so I'm not going to calculate that for all of them I'll just break it down and into three and then other so generally for life insurance someone will get paid a benefit a, a death benefit when the person that owns the policy dies so basically we are going to calculate the claims by taking the face amount of the policy so for example Joe has a policy for $10,000. If Joe dies, then his policy pays out $10,000. So what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the expected claims for Joe's policy um, based on the face value and also the probability of dying in the first year. So this is the SOA's website where you'll find all the mortality tables that they offer. And just for our simple example, I'm just gonna use this one. So there are so many different mortality tables and they can change for various different reasons. So it really depends on the uh, smoker status is a big one, gender is a big one. And there are several other things like the, the method of calculating the birthday and things like that. So the SOA provides standard tables, but the company themselves may also adjust the table for their own company's experience, the type of insurance, that they are using the table for, the selection period. So depending on how recently someone has gone through the underwriting process, the mortality rates could be different. And also mortality improvement because over time, mortality is going down. And since these tables aren't always up to date for the most recent year, that means that we can adjust them for mortality improvement over time. Okay, so now I've got the mortality table from the SOA here. And basically, since Joe is 28 years old, I'm going to go down to the mortality rate for a 28 year old right here. So I'm going to multiply the face value by the probability that he dies in the first year. For the second year, we're going to do the face value and multiply it by the probability that he dies in the second year, which would be when he's age 29. And since this is just a formula here, I'm going to drag it down. Now for Cindy, we're going to do something very similar. She has a million dollar face value, so I'm going to do her face value multiplied by the probability that she dies in age 43. And I'll drag that down. And then for Eric, I'm going to do the same thing. We'll assume that the average age is 38 for this example. So I'll just assume that the age for other is 38. Okay, so now we can calculate total claims for the year by taking the sum of all these. So basically in year one, we expect to have claims of $9,637,048. I can drag this formula down. Now we have the expected claims for each year. Okay, so this is just one part of the equation. We'll fill it in in the reserves tab here. So expected claims, I'm just going to set it equal to what we've calculated here and drag it down. Now we're going to go on to expenses. Now, for projected sales, these are estimates that the insurance company would already have, but for this example, we're just going to assume 13 million for projected sales for the first year. And then for mortgage payment, we're, we're just 
calculating all the different expenses that the insurance company would have. So they're going to have to pay a mortgage for their building, let's say. We'll, we'll assume that's 11,000. Uh, payroll, these are all the expenses paid to the employees of the company. So let's just say they start at uh, 500,000. Let's say that sales commission, all the, the expenses they have to pay to agents that are selling their insurance products. And let's just say that's a percentage of sales. So commissions, let's say they're 5% of sales. And let's say that legal fees are 1.5 million. We'll project these all the way down for 10 years. These are not numbers that the actuaries will know. They'll use different assumptions in order to estimate. So if projected sales for the first year are 13 million, let's just assume they go up, projected sales go up by 2 million each year. So I'll drag that down. And then mortgage payment, that's gonna stay the same. Payroll, that's probably going to increase over time. So let's just assume that payroll increases by 10% each time or each year. And again, there are all different assumptions that the actuaries would actually be using in order to make these different projections. Now, commissions is always gonna be just 5%, let's say. So I'm just gonna take that same formula and copy it down. Legal fees, let's say that they go up by 5% each year based on the actuary's estimates. Okay, so now we can calculate total expenses equals the sum of all of these. Okay, so now we'll bring that over into the reserves tab and we have expected expenses. Okay, and then profit. Okay, so let's just say the insurance company has input into its pricing that they're going to make $30,000 per year, um, increasing 10% every year, let's just say. Okay, so now the insurance company or the actuaries know the total amount of money that is needed at the end of each year. So at the end of year one, they need all this money for the claims that they expect, they need all this for the expenses they have to pay, and they need this in order to make the profit. So if we just sum up all this, this is gonna tell us how much in total that the company needs to have at the end of year one so that they can make sure they have enough for claims and expenses and profit. Now I'm gonna copy that formula all the way down Okay, so this is where it gets a little bit trickier calculating the reserve because we have to take into consideration time value of money. This is stuff that you will study if you haven't already on exam FM where you learn how to use interest rates to calculate a present value. And basically a present value will tell us how much money we need at this immediate time so that by the time we're at the end of year seven or year eight, for example, we have the total amount of money that we need. Because since we can invest money now and earn interest on it, that means that even if we need a dollar in the future, let's say a dollar 10 years from now, we don't need to have a dollar right now because we can earn interest on the money we have so that in, one, in 10 years from now, it equals $1. So let's say that at the end of year 10, we're going to need this much money. But at the end of year nine, we're going to need this much money divided by the one plus the interest rate. We're going to need the present value of this year's reserve, the 56, 56 million plus this amount. So we'll take this divided by 1.05 if we're assuming a 5% interest rate. And then we'll add this on here. Okay, so at the end of year nine, we're going to need the present value of this amount plus everything we need for year nine. And then likewise, the year before that, we're going to need the present value of this amount and we're going to need this full amount. So I can just pull this formula all the way up and in the very first column here, what we're getting is the previous reserve. We discount it by 5% to get the present value at the end of year one. And then we're going to add in everything that we also need to have at the end of year one, the total dollars needed. 
So this is at the end of year one. So we're going to take this one step further to get the final reserve at time zero or at the beginning of year one. So what we can do is just take this, uh, divide it by 1.05, and this will be our final reserve. Keep in mind that this calculation is far more complex in reality. In this example, I only used one mortality table, but in reality, there'd probably be four, five, maybe even more different mortality tables, depending on the smoker statuses, the genders, and maybe some other factors as well. The actuaries would also spend a lot of time coming up with the different assumptions. So the annual salary increase or the annual legal fees increase would be things that actuaries need to put more time into developing. This was an example of what a life insurance actuary might do, but there are also tons of other different specializations that you can get into as an actuary. I spent the most time as a life actuary, so that's what I'm most familiar with. But in this video right here, I've actually gone through the six types of specializations that you can get into, and I go into the different salary expectations as well. So if you are a future actuary, make sure you take the next 10 minutes to go figure out which specialization might be best for you. Go watch this next.